What's up guys, I'm Luke. My name is Lee. And we are Spring Queen. And uh, this week we are going to be talking about um, a comic book, uh, the issue number two of a comic book that uh, we have begun reading and covering on the show. And the name of that comic book would be... Keep the Rich. Alright. So, there are a lot of things that I like to eat. There are a lot of things that you like to eat. Yep. Correct? I mean, like right now, we're eating some candy, leftover Halloween candy. Yep. Would you ever eat the rich, though? Possible. I'm just saying. I've never had the rich. So <laughs> maybe that's good. Go and watch our review of Eat the Rich, uh, number one, the first issue. Uh, but basically, in Eat the Rich, part one, or issue number one, a girl goes to uh, that visit her boyfriend's family, like in the Poconos or Hamptons or something like that. It's like one of those. Some rich place. Yeah, so, some place that only rich people can go to do stuff for their honeymoons and vacations and junk like that. By, by the end of the book, she finds out that they're doing this ritual there basically where they're, uh, their help, they are like basically feeding on them, beating and Kill feeding on them. Eating. Yeah, uh, and feeding on them and she walks upon this at the end of it. Uh, before we get started on issue number two, I would like to say who is involved with this book. So, uh, written by Sarah Gailey, illustrated by Pius Bach, uh, colored by Roman Titov, and lettered by Cardinal Ray. The cover is by Kevin Tong. Uh, there are some variant covers by some other people, um, but the one that we got was this lovely one. Okay. Um, this one picks up. She tries to go and wake her boyfriend up, but he's taken a clonopin. And he's pretty much out of it, and she wants to go, but he's just asleep and telling her to chill out, and they can figure things out in the morning. So she goes to snoop around to pretty much find proof of what they're doing, and when she's in his father's office, I believe, Yes. Um, the nanny pedal um, comes by and catches her and pretty much tells her that she already knows that they're being killed and eaten at when they retire and that they do it because these rich families pretty much pay for all their medical bills. So they find people who are desperate and the story ends, or this issue ends, with her boyfriend's mother telling her they need to speak about what she saw last night. And that's pretty much the whole story. It's, it, it's kind of a different, a tale of two stories here with the first one and the second one, right? Like, you kind of knew that's where it was going in the first issue. Like, at some point, somebody was gonna be eating someone, right? Like, there's, there's yeah. something that's going to happen. Um, you might have thought it was going to be the other way around, but uh, it show it kind of it kind of winds up being that it's the rich people eating the help for the poor people or their servants or whatever you want to call them, um, and so you feel kind of bad for them and you still do, but now you know that they're in on it, you know, like that they know about it, that they know that this is what they're doing. It's almost like they have signed a contract to do this, you know, or, or something. Yeah. To me, it's a very tough story, you know, because it's like, what, what, who wouldn't, if you, who wouldn't do something like that if you knew that, because a lot of these people, what they're doing is they are having their kids taken care of, yeah. or they've got sick relatives, or, um. They bring up that the man that she saw being killed, that his grandson, I believe, was getting chemo. Yeah, and he can't. Pay, he couldn't pay for that. So. His family couldn't pay for it. So, so who who that w would be in that position if you had a loved one, someone very close to you, that was in that position? Who wouldn't like, you know, sacrifice themselves or whatever else to um, to make their loved one's lives better? You know, or that to give their loved one a chance, especially if you're older, like that that gentleman was right. that that happened. Or as Petal says, that she would be dead anyway. She went through a litany of diseases that 
she had and the reason why she was there and um so that, that so it's kind of they get they choose through death well and but, it's pretty gnarly but they get benefits while they're alive well and so what you're saying what she was saying in that part the the point that you're making is is that um she they actually added years on to her life so she would have been dead before that anyway so she gets she kind of gets to add more years on to her life because they helped her out with that i want to start off uh with just talking about the the aspects of the book um of as far as the artwork i was just talking about i love the the uh, feel of the covers on this i know that sounds like a weird thing to say but like it's very matte yes uh and um, I love the cover on this one. I really like the uh, the look of it. I mean, even the back of it, which is, is it, it's for a, a back cover, it's pretty uh, like, it kind of pops, you know what I'm saying? Even though it's black and like, but it still kind of pops with that stuff. Um, but yeah, the, the front cover with our with our main character on there is really cool. Um, Joe. Joe, yes, Joe. Sorry, I forgot what her name was. And I think the artwork's really good in the book too. I, I've, uh, I think they do a good job of setting the mood and the tone of the book. There hasn't been anything in the, since this book started that I felt was lighthearted at all, really. I mean, when they go to the parties and stuff, it's usually at night. Uh, there's a sense of uh, dread, I guess, or something, because you, because she knows something's going to happen. Um, on the first night she's there, she sees what goes down. Yeah, yeah. Um, they're not beating around the bush with her, right? Like, really, like they're... Like they were gonna, they're, they're trying to welcome her into the family almost, you know, <laughs> yeah. um, by just saying, hey, this is who we are and whether, uh, and what do you do? Do you go report this to the authorities where, um, where then you ruin these people's lives that are getting medical help and everything else that they're helping them with? That's not going to help them. And like I said, they're in on it. It's not like, it's not like they tricked the guy and when he went there that that was something that he didn't know was going to happen. He knew when it was going to happen. He knew what the date was going to be. He knew what was going to happen. Do they continue to take care of their family or whatever after they eat them? Obviously, they're trying to talk about the, the disparity between rich and poor people, right? Like, there is this huge gap in that, um, you know, what is this? Would it, would it take this kind of system? Would it take this kind of extremism? to make it work to where poor people would be able to live a quality life, you know, but maybe have a very gruesome death. Um, but you're talking about quality and a little, and more quantity of life probably, but maybe not have a quality death. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. so. Well, like I said, it's a pretty gnarly death. I continue to enjoy this book. Um, I, 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 I am happy that they kind of went uh, in a bit of a different direction with it than just the standard, you know, uh, I didn't know if this was going to be some kind of uh, uh, ready or not or you're next or something like that where she was going to, no, you guys aren't going to eat me. And like, you know, you just, you don't know when you get that she was going to fight back against them and yeah. she was going to know how to use weapons. And um, I like that there's kind of a moral dilemma for her now as to what you do with this information that you've been given. Because you see that everyone that's here is being, is okay with this. It's it's a almost like a, an economic system and healthcare system that they have that's working for everyone involved. Um, which you may not agree with, but it's working for them, right? I'm going to give this on our screen counter. Uh, for me, I'm gonna give it three and a half screens because I feel like that um, it, the story's continuing on well. Um, there was no no downtime or anything I felt like was boring in this. So, um, what would you give it to my friend? I was thinking the same three and a half. Three and a half screens? A three and a half screens from screen point. So, uh, we will continue reviewing this book until we feel like we don't want to do it anymore. <laughs> um, and we'll do it issue by issue because this seems like uh, it's going to be going on for a little while. I don't know that they've announced how many issues it's going to be or if this is going to be an ongoing thing. Um, but we are, uh, at least I am enjoying it. Uh, and uh, I would say let's let's continue on with it for right now. And we'll see if we start to get sick of it. We'll stop. But or if we get sucky. Okay. 
if it gets stuck you will stop we would love for you guys all to uh to comment to share to subscribe to the page um and let all your friends know about us um if they're comic book fans or they're horror movie fans or whatever else um we even did a thing with a, a, a wrestling thing a couple episodes ago so i mean we we try to get as much of our geekdom in there as we can in addition to the fact that we are horror fans we're re reviewing horror content um and also our uh, our our special guest host sometimes taquito that we have that comes in from time to time um and uh so uh we would just love it if you guys would share and uh let everyone let, let everyone know about us because we're, we're trying to grow this thing and and we want to do it the right way so uh, i have been luke i have been Ainsley. and that, that was, was nom. that was nom nom uh <laughs> and together we are scream queen see you guys later bye